Is I need to see him face as he reacts to the first career interception for a touchdown. Dante Winter, what does it feel like watching that? It feels awesome. And then a lot of times when I watch it now, I'm thinking, man, I can't believe I did that for so long, right? <laughs> when I wake up in the morning and my back is aching, I'm like, I can't believe I did that. But it's it's great to see that. Dante, you've got three Pro Bowls to show for it. You've got a career as an analyst now. You uh, obviously have been with so many teams, the Bills, the Niners, safety for the Browns and Commanders. You're a first round pick out of the Ohio State. So I got I to gotta start with this though. You know, I was excited about when I heard you were coming on I was, and I thought, did that Hitner thing ever happen? Because you wanted to change your name. And I was, I was here for the Hitner merchandise. I wanted to buy it. I was just being a rebel, right? I was being a rebel. I was a little fed up from getting those $40,000 fines in the mail every <laughs> week, right? So it was my way of almost lashing out against the NFL. But then when I heard I had to change everything that was in my name from bank accounts to homes that I own, cars, I'm like, okay, you know what? I, I, I think I'll just, you know, keep the nickname. I won't go ahead with the whole transformation. I'm going to call you Hittner, though, just between you and me. You were one of the best safeties in all of the Ohio State history, and there's only four more days until college football starts. I know nothing, but I heard that there's some drama with Kyle McCord, Devin Brown, quarterback competition. Who's coming out on top, Dante? Well, I don't think anybody knows. I know that Buckeye Nation would like to know like everybody else, but... It, it, something worries me about not having a definite starter heading into the season. I know that you have a lot of NIL deal stuff that goes on with players that aren't named the starter. They might take offense to being named the backup and want to transfer. But I think that if you have championship aspirations, you have to figure out who your starting quarterback is, who's going to be the leader of this team, or it could be a wasted season. So hopefully they can name the starting quarterback sooner than later. They're ranked number three. Is that fair, given the quarterback situation, or should they be higher? I think they possibly should be lower. And then when I look at the defense, for, for the past few years, I've been extremely disappointed with the production on defense, and then particularly the secondary, right? Guys giving up big plays and bad moments, bad technique, right? So that's just not Ohio State lineage. That's not the standard. So if this team is going to go anywhere, it's going to be from the defense stepping up and getting back to playing Ohio State defense. That's how you can take care of Georgia, finally, hopefully. Dante Whitner joining us. I like the, uh, you're keeping it real. I thought you were going to puff up and say Ohio State no. should be ranked number one. Well, I love this, but I, now let's take it over to the NFL, the world I'm a little bit more comfortable in, and talk about one of your Ohio State products and Justin Fields. And I was just talking about him. He looks good. They've got DJ Moore, all of that, but they're still being projected as a bottom of the barrel NFC North squad this year, below Jordan Love, who's more unknown to us than Justin Fields is. Is that Fair to Justin Fields? I think it is fair. When you look at the way the Chicago Bears performed last year, and particularly on offense, how they couldn't keep drives together and get into the end zone, the number of turnovers, yes, Justin Fields had a great year rushing and running the football. But when he's back there behind center, I don't see the true full command. Now, I could be wrong. Mm. Think about how everybody looked at the Philadelphia Eagles last year and Jalen Hurts. They didn't believe in Jalen Hurst. They didn't believe in the Philadelphia Eagles. He's a similar quarterback to Justin Fields, a mobile guy, similar offense. So maybe they can tailor the offense more so around Justin Fields mm -hmm. so that they can have that productivity that uh, Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles have. So if they can do that and tailor it around him, they can have success. If not, and just expect him to be a drop back quarterback, I don't see them having success. I mean, I think DJ Moore is, is, we're all hoping, I'm a Chicago girl, we're all hoping he is the big difference because he's now part of that offense that's catered around him. And the other thing is we don't know Jordan Love either. We don't know what that looks like there with him. So there's a bit of unknown uh, all around in the NFC North. Um, here, Justin Fields isn't somehow on this list I'm gonna show you, but I'm, here's a list of former Buckeye pro bowlers, Dante, that are active in the league. Anybody stick out to you? It's a really fun list. Joey Bosa, he always sticks out. He's the big brother <laughs> to Nick Bosa. So the Bosa twins, absolutely. And then Marshawn Lattimore, who Love is from that. my high school in Cleveland, Ohio, Glenville High School, Ohio State, followed to Ohio State, and now he's one of the top corners in the league. And then I have to go with Denzel Ward because, you know, I'm from Cleveland. He's a Cleveland guy. He plays for the Cleveland Browns, and he's somewhere in the top ten. 
My last guy to shout out is Michael Thomas. <laughs> He's been through trials and tribulations over the past few years with injuries and not getting along with the coaching staff. I'm expecting him to have a bounce back year and potentially win comeback player of the year. Wait, I love to hear that. And both, you know, two of those guys you shouted out are on the Saints and the, that division's, you know, they just named Baker Mayfield the starter of Tampa. But I mean, I, w I would hope with Derek Carr and Michael Thomas, I was with Sean Payton just last week, ta somehow Michael Thomas kept coming up in the conversation because he's such a prolific talent and hopefully we can get the best out of him somehow. We'd love to see it. Uh, now, I understand you are coming to us from the Bay Area. Is that true? Absolutely. Yay area. Yay area. <laughs> okay, the right? yay area. I don't know if I can call it that. Okay, the yay area. But let's talk about these Niners when we're talking about quarterback competitions and what's going on or what not, might not be going on. Um, listen, there has been seemingly no better uh, publicist for Brock Purdy than you. I was reading last year that you'll say that he's going to, he, if he leads his team to a Super Bowl, which he can, he'll be the second coming of Tom Brady. Like, are you in on Brock Purdy 2023? Absolutely. Seventh round draft pick, won 10 consecutive games last year to lead the 49ers deep into the playoffs. And if he plays the entire game versus the Philadelphia Eagles, we might be saying it to, San Francisco 49ers were the 2022 NFL champions. I mean, I, I really believe that. When you look at his time at Iowa State, it was a four-year starter. He was all Pac-12, I believe, for his final two years. And then the opportunity last year wasn't too big for him. They didn't ask him to force the ball downfield into coverage. They leaned on what they do well, and that's run the ball with consistent consistency and physicality. And then when they did ask him to throw the ball downfield, it was a lot of easy throws. And having that four years in college of starting, of being the man, of going through week to week and day to day preparation, prepare him for that moment. So I believe they're going to start fast. He looks well in practice. He's fully healed from the from the UCL injury in his elbow. So I'm expecting the 49ers to be one of the top teams in the NFC this year. What's holding them back? Like, what would be the one, if we're all in on the quarterback and we got the back of whether it's Trey, whether it's Sam Darnold, what would be the one concern? Injuries. They don't have a fully developed roster right now. They're pretty top heavy. When you look at the eight out of the top 100 players in the top NFL last year, the 49ers have eight of those guys. 8% of the top players in the NFL is on the 49ers roster in the top 22. But when you look and you go deeper into the roster, they don't have much experience. They don't have guys that have actually started games, prepared throughout a week, and played winning-style football. So they're going to have to stay healthy. And one of the guys in particular is uh, McCaffrey. McCaffrey is a guy who can possibly, in a Kyle Shanahan system for an entire year, can possibly have 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 receiving, which will be an incredible feat in, already, in an already incredible career. You know, the more you talk about the, what's going on with the offense and your faith in Brock Purdy, the more I think they should trade Trey Lance. Do you? I think that they should trade Trey Lance, but what type of value do you get for him right now? Do you take a six-round pick and just cut ties with him? I don't really think so. I think that in Kyle Shanahan's system, you need a really good second quarterback, right? And we've seen over the past years, they've had Nick Mullins, they've had C.J. Beathard, and these guys came in, and they couldn't keep the ship afloat, right, when Jimmy Garoppolo went down with injury. So they need a second quarterback and possibly a third quarterback. Last year in the playoffs, deep, when, you know, everything was on the line, you see Brock Purdy go out with an injury, and then they put a quarterback in there who had been on the roster for one week, and they couldn't move the ball or even get a first down. They have the talent around the quarterback position. They're built the proper way with the offenses and defensive line. They have two of the top linebackers, one and two in the NFL, and an all-pro safety. I think the 49ers are really the favorite to win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, and they, I mean, you can say, that, what do they get back for that? But there's also the point that they would save $9 million over the next two years. If they do make that, they can add depth somewhere else. And Sam Darnold, as we've seen, you know, can maybe handle himself in this backup role. Hopefully, like you're saying, everybody stays healthy. Now, we got to get into your bills. There's rumors they might be looking at adding Jonathan Taylor. I'd like your thoughts on that because you're talking about the Super Bowl favorite. What's to keep it from being the Niners and the Bills in the big game? Running the ball and running it with consistency in the fourth quarter in four-minute situations. Four-minute situations are we know we have the ball, we have to retain it and knock as much time off the clock to win those close games in the playoffs. 
You cannot continuously put the ball in Josh Allen's hands in those moments. We've seen him fail in those moments. A running game in Buffalo makes them the favorite to win the Super Bowl this year. And then on defense, when you get a guy like Jonathan Taylor, who two years ago had 1,800 yards rushing and 18 mm -hmm. touchdowns, right? Last year he had a drop-off in production, but when you put that type of guy in this offense, now you have to pick your poison. Do you play coverage and be soft and allow Jonathan Taylor to run the ball because you have Diggs and those guys running through the defense? Or do you allocate more guys into the box and let those guys eat outside and go one-on-one? -on -one? So if the, if the, I'm going to say it right now, if okay. the Bills get Jonathan Taylor, they're Super Bowl champions. Go Trey for him. I'm telling you, Super Bowl champions if they get him. If they get him, they need a bit of, it's so funny because I was up there at camp and Von Miller was like, it was before Dalvin signed and it, there was a rumors about Dalvin either going to Miami or the Bills and Von was like, we don't need a running back. We're good, we, but, but they need a run game. Absolutely, you can't expect Josh Allen to drop back and throw the ball 40 times and score 40 points every week. At some point, defensive coordinators and defenses catch up with every offense in NFL history, right? They're studying you in the off season. You need a way to counterattack these defenses and run the ball, run it with consistency, and take a lot of those throws and mistakes out of Josh Allen's hands. Really well said, man. Dante, you are bringing it today. We appreciate you so much. And I mean, you're, you're not even focused on the NFL right now. You are focused on college football, which is starting very soon. You can see Dante Whitner on CBS covering the game. Give me like a real quick college football prediction on your way out. Uh... I think that Georgia and Ohio State will end up in the national championship. I think the, 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 the Ohio State defense will get back to the standard that we're used to and accustomed to. A lot of young players over the past few years, and I think that this is their time, right? Last year, we, we made some noise. It was like one year early. I think that this year, we're right on time. So the defense can play well. We can finally bring the chip back to Columbus. Amazing. Dante, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for the time this morning. And I'm sure Bills fans are going to love hearing that they are Super Bowl bound and they're going to start some sort of GoFundMe to catch Jonathan Taylor hey, thanks for where watching. he belongs, here to get which the is, of course, uh, in right Buffalo for this season.